Good morning, this is Tom. This is a little unboxing video. And this is related to the Kenwood project. And Chloe says good morning as well. What you're listening to in the background before we get started is the Navassa Island D Expedition. K1N is their call sign. They are on the air right now on 10 meters single sideband and I just worked them and I'm in their log book on 10 watts on the Anon 10 they heard me on 10 watts they gave me a 5-9 report I was quite happy about that they're south of me I'm in New York State Navassa Island is a little uninhabited island between Haiti and Jamaica and it's owned by the United States and it is a natural wildlife habitat protected and nobody's been on that island since 1993 that's the last time they were there and they're there right now 2015 and they're transmitting and there's the island where it is down there between Jamaica and Haiti and uh, I just got a confirmed signal to them happily Okay, back to this. <clears throat> Let me turn this down. I decided to go all out with this restoration of this radio. When I bought the radio, I was told by the seller on eBay that the radio had new final tubes in it. But I've always suspected they weren't. I, as I mentioned, I think, on the other video, I only have 90 watts out on it. And that radio is capable of about 140, 130. And most people get about 110 to 120 out on it. And it could be my high voltage capacitors in my final cage, but it could also be the tubes. And I decided I'm just going to change everything in that radio and hopefully get it uh, really up to its original specs where it originally was back in 73 or whenever it was made. I, I think I shared with you, I believe it's an early 73 radio. It has a low serial number compared to others that have known purchase dates and it looks like it's at least 73 or 74 probably actually probably 74 the radio was came out in November of 73 on the American market so there's a good chance it's probably a 74 actually not a 73 so these are new old stock General Electric uh, tubes I bought them from Nebraska. Yeah, I'll share that with you. Might as well. The surplus stores of Nebraska, and you can find them on the internet. Boy, that's not going to focus. There it is. This camera takes a minute. They uh, they weren't cheap. You can get them cheaper, but I wanted to buy from a reputable company. True, no new old stock tubes for this project. Uh, there's people that sell them on eBay cheaper, and you can get them cheaper. You can also buy Chinese ones, but uh, I wanted American-made, good quality tubes. Paid a little more for them, but I think it'll be worth it. So these are 6146Bs. Very popular transmitting tube and a lot of early uh, transmitters in the six, 50s, 60s, and 70s. A lot of Heath kit transmitters had them in it. Some amplifiers actually run these. They'll run like four to six of these things in parallel. Uh, but just the two are in the Kenwood. I'm not going to pull these both out of the box. It also has a driver tube in it, which is a smaller tube. It's a 12 volt. I can't remember the number. I have a new old stock one of those already that I'm going to put in it, which I don't have handy to show you, but I do have it. Uh, so, 
I'm hoping these will give me good output power and I'm still working on the radio. I, oh, yeah, another little update. I bought a couple supplies. I think I shared with you in the last video, I was having trouble desoldering some of those caps. I got a better soldering iron. This is a good weller uh, iron. Uh, the other one I have is, is a good iron, but it's just not hot enough. This is good for small components, and this is made in England, and it's a well-made, uh, well, good company. Nothing wrong with it. It's Antex. If you ever come across them, they're made in England, and they're good. But uh, this is only 15 watts, and this one's 35 watts, so it's get a little hotter. And I bought a new desoldering uh, sucker. I have one, but it's not that great. I'm thinking, I'm hoping this one's better. It comes well recommended. And I bought a big spool of solder wick. Uh, so between those tools I think I can probably uh, get those old capacitors out a little quicker and a little easier. It's going to be a lot of work anyhow the way I do it. But So this is Tom and listening out to a Navassa Island. By the way, uh, I'll leave this on for a few minutes. He's transmitting on, and I don't know if they're doing this every day, but they're transmitting on 28375, and they're listening up 5, which means, for those who are not ham operators, uh, when I talked to him, I transmitted my signal on 28380, and he heard me on 2837. It's called running split, and they do that so that everybody's not piled on top of each other and they can pick out your voice and everybody else isn't drowning out his signal. So if you listen to him, which is what I have attuned to, you're going to hear him. You're going to hear the guy talking on the island. Um, there's nobody interfering with him. Once in a while people will get on his frequency and you'll hear people yelling at him, get off his frequency because they're drowning him out. Uh, so here we go. I'll turn this up. Whoops. Thanks, Okay, Yankee. Now we'll cover it. Yankee Fox, Quebec, 5 nine. Yep, 73, Quebec. So and you can't hear the people talking to him that he's listening to because they're all transmitting up here. If you see all these signals are the people talking to him and he's transmitting over here. Thank you. Okay, November 1, November 1. November 1, Radio Echo Sierra 59. We'll see if he gives his call sign. It is, his call sign is K1M, or K1 Navasa. Thank you. Who's the officer? Okay, the mic with you, zero. Mike Whiskey Zero, zero fight, uh, Victor Oscar Whiskey, is that correct? Okay, 73, thank you. This is Kilo Wendavaza, 380 to 410. That's him. Thank you. This is Tom. Thanks for listening.